Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing video. If this is your first time tuning in to the channel, I welcome you. If you've been here before, welcome back as always. So we are gonna go to the pier. Mom's gonna join me. We're gonna go to the State Park Pier. Got some artificials tied up. I do have some live shrimp in the bait cooler. We're bringing a variety of baits. I'm hoping to get in some Spanish. Now I am gonna cut in a footage from yesterday because we did go out there yesterday and I managed one nice fish. So I'll show you that and then we're gonna go and try to catch us some stuff today. So stay tuned, enjoy this video out on the pier. Well, we just got to the pier, so it's not a bad day. We have yellow flags flying and there's hardly any wind. It did drizzle a little bit and I'm hoping the water's cleared up. A little bit more than it was yesterday so but i did get a bite from a spanish yesterday so let's go ahead and go out there and <laughs> see what we can do y'all so this is what i'm using just a live shrimp i got a fish oh there we go oh my goodness <laughs> what the heck do i have i hope it's something good oh sheep's head that's a nice one yeah we can grab the net <laughs> That was quick. Mom's got the net. I didn't expect to catch this. Hey. Almost there. There we go. Here, I can pull it up if you want. You want to hold this? On the toad fish. Yeah. All right, y'all. It's not a bad sheep's head. Yeah, I didn't expect that. He just kind of took it. So, wasn't really the target species. I didn't exactly have a target species coming out here. I was trying to catch some flounder, but hey, I will not turn this down. They're very good to eat, and it's almost time where they get real hard to catch once the water warms up like it is. So, I'm pretty happy to catch this fish. Beautiful sheep's head. They only have to be 12 inches to the fork in Alabama. So, he's going to go in the cooler with us. Let me throw them on ice, and I'll show you what I'm using. Well, y'all, that wasn't a bad sheep's head. Kind of took me by surprise. I don't know if you could hear it in my voice, but uh, he was up under that pier and ate that live shrimp. This is a setup I'm using today. This is a Toadfish Carbon Elite Reel. This is a 3,000 size with 20 pound braid. And then I am using this seven foot, two inch, medium heavy, fast action rod. Toadfish was cool enough to send some out to the BAM Saltwater Fishing Channel tryout. So I appreciate them. If you want to go pick you up a combo like this, I'll include their link down in the description below. It helps out the channel and allows you to get something pretty cool to fish with. My rig is really simple. It's a Carolina rig. I like to keep it simple like that, which we also call it fish finder rig, or you may call it that. But I have a size four Mustad O'Shaughnessy J hook. It's just a really tiny hook and it gets the job done. It's strong. I'm using about 18 inches of 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. Come into a black barrel swivel and a one ounce egg weight. Now, when you tie this up, you want to throw that egg weight on first and allow it to move freely up and down your line. It allows the fish to take your bait without feeling much resistance from the weight. Works pretty well. You can use it almost anywhere. All right. Well, I only caught one. So I'm going to give it to this couple that's been fishing a while. They haven't caught anything. So I catch fish all the time. So at least we can. Yes, yeah, sheep's head. Man, you fed me tonight. I'm gonna go home and make me some cheese grits. Oh, heck yeah. And fry them right up. Well, that sounds awesome, yeah, man. It's not in vain, man. Yes, sir. Well, I'm Thank glad you, you can appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. You too. <laughs> yeah, I know everybody Everybody cooking fish with cheese grits sounds delicious. <laughs> I catch fish all the time. If I caught a few more, I would have kept them, but they're very nice to me, so I try to be nice back. So all I'm using is this white jig. I call it a loony jig because they used to be tied by Terry Looney. And they're one of the best simple jigs out there that actually hold up really well. But he doesn't tie them anymore, so there's someone that ties them similar. But you'll hear me call it a loony jig, but it's just a one ounce hair jig with that arrowhead style lead. And then I have about a foot of 50 pound fluorocarbon that you just change out once you get a bad nick in it or something. But majority of time it holds up pretty well against Spanish and bluefish. So let's cast that out and see what we can do today. Oh, there's one. Oh, came off. <laughs> Come on. Oh, he's coming back for it. Okay, just pulled it out of his mouth. Oh, got one. Got one. That's a good one too. There go. <laughs> oh, shark, shark. I got a free line. Ah, he got it. Ah, dang shark. Shark got my fish. I'm gonna have to pop it. Hold the spool. Dang! 
Doing good, yeah, you're over me. Yeah, it is. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty Spanish, too. Hey, I might have got the head back. I got something back from it. Oh, man. Yeah, I got half of it. <laughs> that was a good Spanish, too. There you go. Dang it. Things. First little cast right there. This is what happens when you have a shark problem and you can't fish for him out here. So take your stuff. At least I got my jig out of his mouth. Dang, that sucks. Well, let's try that again. So that's one of the major problems you have out here are the sharks. They like to take your catch. Heck, we'll get one in eventually. Oh, oh. Get him, get him, get him. Oh, no. Oh, Stop. He's got it. He he got it. Dang. You have no. There's no chance. Mm, let go. Oh, there we go. So these these sharks out here are just relentless on the pier. But I'm gonna tighten that drag down and see if I can winch the next Spanish that bites it. Cause this is obnoxious, just feeding the sharks and wasting fish Down and lures. Find that trap. <laughs> yeah, it is a nice Spanish. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> All right. You got it in. You can't shark. I can read the comments now, but if you've never fished on the state on the Gulf State Pier, you can't say anything because Oh yeah, they would get it instantly. Mom just caught a really nice Spanish on a gotcha plug. This is a Spanish mackerel. They have some super sharp teeth. That is a target species today. So we're gonna throw it in the cooler. And the biggest telltale sign on Spanish is that big dark dorsal fin on the front. So cause kings look the same when they're small like that and you can't keep the undersized kings but this has that big dorsal fin that's black so that is a spanish mackerel there's other telltale signs about lateral lines and stuff but this one's going to go in the cooler one thing about spanish mackerels they have some very small sticky scales so having a rag or a hose handy helps a lot that was funny mom was excited about that because if you don't go crazy and try to get them in the shark's going to take it every time so she's one up on me now see if i can get one that wasn't a bad one though good job <laughs> <laughs> and this is what mom caught it on was a gotcha plug there's different brands that make them so i think this one's the gotcha brand but it's just a metal cigar shaped plug that has treble hooks on it so they're very dangerous throwing around because those treble hooks like snag air kind of like a rattle trap but it's just a heavy bait and it works great for these spanish mackerel and other toothy critters let's see if i can get one in this time one two three four five six seven seven sharks seven sharks out there Oh, hardtails everywhere. Or, or the Spanish. I don't know. Hardtail. This is a blue runner. Great offshore bait. And King Michael bait. That's a solid blue runner. Wow, look at The sharks don't want him, though. Where are they? They're all full of Spanish. All right. Look at this hardtail or blue runner. These things are big tuna bait, big amberjack bait. There you go, brother. <laughs> you no problem. All right, let's try that again. There you go. You got him just real. Oh, there he is. That's a good one, too. That's a real. Yeah, yeah. Get him, 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 get him. Get him. Oh, he's out of the water. Boom. Good job. <laughs> that shark was right on that fish. That was close. <laughs> there you go. On the on the loony jig. Good job. Mom well, just got a nice Spanish mackerel. Check that out. So nice black dorsal fin on there. It almost got bit. Let's see where that uh one shark bite, one shark tooth went in there, but mom did pretty good getting it out. So crazy. <laughs> it's nothing crazy. They're not giant, but it's fun. See, the state of Alabama doesn't allow anybody to shark fish in the state park, and this is a state park pier. So if you shark fish or they think you're trying to shark fish or any of that, they come out and can give you a fine. So 
you can't do anything can't even bring them on if you do accidentally hook them like that it pretty much just leaves us no resort but other than trying to pop it off and hopefully your hook comes out and if it doesn't those sharks they keep the hook in their mouth so it is what it is that's just how the alabama state park system is here in gulf shores alabama so <laughs> be prepared i got to dig around there and they had three packs four packs of ah hardtails are all over it oh 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 good good spanish yeah yeah i see that one Good Spanish. Good Spanish. There we go. There we go. Oh, shoot. That's a good Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, I might. Ah, Mr. Lee John's going to hand line that Spanish for me. We have a net, but if you leave that Spanish in the water. He's done. Yeah, I got I got gotcha. you. I'm going to swing it on my side, Lee. Okay, he missed one. There we go. Oh my God. That's what we're after. What a beautiful Spanish mackerel. So that's the, that's the size we're after. A little bit bigger than mom's, but she's still ahead of me in quantity. <laughs> <laughs> but he ate that size 10 Rapala X wrap. So, and 50 pound monofilament. I switched to the jerk bait and luckily I got the little bit bigger fish. So I've been catching a bunch of hardtails. So my first big whole Spanish that I landed today. But you can see where that shark tried to get them. It's so crazy because we're really unconventional fishing here, just trying to hand line them up and winch them up. Because if you leave them down in the water and wait for a net, you're gonna lose it to the shark. So we have to try our best to get these fish up. And if you lose them in the process, it's just, it is what it is. So, but you can see where that shark tried to get them. But luckily I was able to get this one up with a little bit of assistance. And he's gonna go on ice. We're gonna bleed them out, pull those gills out. And it's gonna be a fresh, delicious fish take home and either fry up or make some dip with. Check out those teeth on these jokers. So that's why I'm using heavy fluoro. You can also use wire or heavy mono. With wire, you lose a lot less lures, but you get a lot less bites for Spanish. Now for Kings, I'm using wire all the time. When I'm trying to catch Spanish, I use that 50 pound leader with this X wrap. And majority of the time you'll be able to land your fish, but check out those chompers on them. Beautiful fish. Oh, let's try that again. So my leader, I'm actually going to tie on a new leader because it's kind of frayed up. Got a new leader tied up. All I'm using is a little bitty black barrel swivel. So you want to be able to use like black or gray terminal tackle. Because if you use like the gold or silver, they're going to key in on that gold and silver and cut you off every time. So just make sure you get a darker color or matte finish barrel swivel. So I just pick up the black Bill Fisher swivels, Spro Power swivels. They all work the same. And then I put on a new stretch of about two foot of 50 pound fluorocarbon. Mono works the same. Then the size 10 X wrap. Oh. And a seven foot rod, medium heavy, medium power will work. I'm using 20 pound braid and a 4,000 size reel. That'll land majority of these fish out here until you start getting to the bigger fish like the bigger jacks, kings, tarpon, etc. Oh, see if we can find another big fish here. So, all I'm doing with this X wrap is kind of doing a real jerk, real jerk, jerk, you know standard jerk bait type retrieve but you can also do a steady retrieve you can do a fast retrieve but you just kind of change it up to how the fish wants so if you caught a fish or got one to come up and look at it or if you see someone else catch a fish reeling it faster then reel it faster if you see someone letting it sink then it might mean they're kind of lower in the water column at that time and so you can reel it a little slower or start throwing a spoon or a jig like i was earlier key is just to observe what's going on around you so the best way to take care of your catch is bleed it out and bury it in ice especially oily fish like mackerel so now you know, if I'm in the boat or something and I catch something that'll live pretty good, I'll throw them in the live well. But out on the pier, a cooler with ice is your best bet. And then you can cut it and let it bleed out so you get that fresh, clean meat. So we have these mackerel buried in ice. Check that beautiful fish out. So they're very abundant. It's not like a super rare, hard to catch fish, but it is fun catching them, especially coming out on the pier and trying to get them away from the sharks. Cause look, this one barely made it away from them. <laughs> but that's a good one there. And then mom outfished me today. And she got a couple, but mine is still bigger in length 
<laughs> Today I'm going to be using the Sword 7 inch fillet knife. They're cool enough to sponsor the channel, so if you want to pick one up, I'll include a link down in the description below. Sharp knives, they got that grippy G10. And then a really nice Kydex sheath that drains and doesn't get all nasty or dried up like some leather or nylon sheaths do. So like I said, I'll include a link down in the description below since they're cool enough to sponsor the channel and if you want to go pick you up one. But we have these Spanish mackerel. They're extremely easy to clean. They have some serious teeth, so you definitely don't want to get your fingers in there. But what I'd normally do is I'll cut it or bleed it out by pulling the gills out before buried in the ice just so it's bled out and it's very fresh because they are an oilier and bloodier fish. It just improves the meat quality and also it kind of dispatches them. It's a little bit more humane. They do have very small, tiny scales. Their skin's smooth, you know, unlike a redfish where you can see the scales. These have extremely small scales and they're very sticky too. So usually a water hose will clean them off. I do it very informal, you know. This isn't something I want to get every little bit piece of meat off. But I do my angled cut. Come around along the dorsal fin. On a bigger one, I like to take my time a little bit more. And just fillet that meat right off the bone. They have some pretty thin bones. So you just wanna be careful not to cut through to the other side. And I'll go through and just finish it off towards the tail. And I won't cut it all the way off the tail around that rib cage. So we get down just like that. And like I said, I don't cut it all the way off the tail because to skin them, I flip it around and use the weight of the fish as leverage. And I'll go through and see if I don't jack it up. They got some pretty thin, pretty thin skin. But I will just fillet that meat right off the skin without cutting through the skin because they have some very thin skin. And usually I like to do it in one fluid motion, but I'm trying to be careful here not to cut that skin or get all that red meat along there. So we have a beautiful fillet. And the only thing next that you need to do is run your finger along, make sure you don't feel any of the pin bones. And if you do, you can cut them out, but you also want to cut out that bloodline. So when you bleed them out, it's not as profound, but it still will make the fish pretty fishy. So you can go along and cut out that bloodline. And then you have some really clean meat but I'll do that when I get inside or when I get home. Right now we'll leave this filet whole and buried in ice and finish cleaning the rest of these fish. So another thing with Spanish that's awesome that you can do is a lot of times you can take this belly meat because it's very shiny and this belly meat here and cut small strips of it, just like that. So you can cut them big and cut them small, it doesn't really matter. And then you can go and take one of your favorite jigs or you can do it with crappie jigs as well if the wind isn't strong or the current's not strong. But you can take a jig just like this, put that strip of belly meat on there, and you have an excellent flounder bait and big Spanish bait. So you can catch more of these Spanish or you can bounce it on the bottom below the pilings and try to catch some flounder that way with your bycatch. So you can do the same thing with Bonita as well. But that's a great little trick there when you have some Spanish carcasses, especially that belly meat right here, just because of how tough and how shiny it is. So we'll finish cleaning these fish up and keep them buried in the ice. <laughs> that was actually pretty fun. So clean those fish, they're buried in ice and I'm probably gonna take them home and fry the big one and then the small one probably end up making some Spanish dip. If you want to watch that video, I'll try to link it down in the description below because I've done it before and it's really good. Pretty successful trip, even though we went through a lot of lures and the sharks, but that is just the nature of the beast. If you come on the Alabama Gulf State Park Pier, that's just how it is. There's, sharks are a huge problem on this pier and you just gotta just be expected to lose some fish and tackle. We are all loaded up. So I'm gonna head back home. We got the Spanish cleaned up in the cooler and our rods put up. That was a very fun trip. So the sharks are just, they're just a problem over here. The Alabama State Park does not allow you to shark fish, try to land a shark, even bring one up on the pier or attempt to. So they are an issue out on this pier because they don't have any natural enemies out there. 
and they aren't being kind of thinned out per se. So they have a continuous food source. You just lose your fish and you lose your tackle pretty consistently when the fish are biting good. But if you kind of lock them down and do all crazy like mom did or like me, where we lock them down and just try to get them in as quick as possible, you may lose a bunch of fish that way as well by pulling the hook, but at least you have a higher chance of landing it instead of it getting eaten by a shark. So I appreciate y'all for watching. It is dark outside. We are home. So that was a great day out on the pier, or I should say a couple days because the first day we caught that sheep's head and ended up not catching anything else but the next day made up for it so that was very fun i want to thank the sponsors for supporting the channel and i want to thank y'all mostly for supporting the channel we are almost at 30,000 subscribers at the time of making this video that is so crazy i haven't even been on youtube for two years yet not even two years and we're almost at 30,000. so that is awesome and i cannot do it without y'all so if you have noticed you haven't subscribed already i really appreciate it if you go hit that subscribe button down below it allows you to keep up with some great content like this and it just allows this channel to grow so we can put out more content for y'all i have wanted to do youtube and be successful at youtube years ago but I just did not have the funds to get a camera like I have now. And I was also in the army. I didn't have the time. So now that I'm back home and enjoying life, I am so glad that I can make content to share my experiences and educate everybody. Whether you're an experienced fisherman or a beginner, we can always learn something. So I appreciate y'all for watching. Like I said before, we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Don't forget to go check the links down below for the cool sponsors of the channel. I want to thank the good Lord above for everything he does for us, and we'll see you later.